Welcome to DIY by Eric Barnes, guys. Eight key things to keep your fish alive during a power outage. That's what we're talking about today. And at the very end, I'm gonna show you how I never have to do water changes on this system, and it gives me free food. Stick around to the end of the video for that. figure out if it's going to be a short-term power outage or if it's going to be a long-term power outage. If it's short-term, you're probably going to be okay. Just keep the lid closed so the heat stays in as long as possible. If there are any, are any gaps in the lid, try to cover those up uh, and, and basically sustain as much heat as you can. Also, don't do any feedings. Now, if you have a long-term power outage, first thing you need to figure out is how long. The rest of the day, the rest of the week, and that will help you determine on how many of the next eight steps you need to take uh, into account for yourself. If you do know the power outage is coming, crank the heaters beforehand as long as you can. You wanna keep it in within a safe temperature for the fish, but definitely starting at a higher temperature, it's gonna help you get through the day if it's just a power outage through the rest of the day. If this is gonna be a longer term power outage than that, you may wanna look at different options like generators and batteries right off the bat but this will be something that will at least keep your tank at a temperature at least as long as possible. Number two, if you have multiple tanks and it's possible to consolidate, consolidate not just the fish, but also the heaters. If it's a rolling blackout, which in many cases, power sometimes may come on and come back out, come back off, even having the, the heaters on for an hour or two it will help you generate more heat in the tank and sustain it for the longer term. That doesn't always work if it's a permanently off uh, power though. Get a battery air pump. They're like 15 bucks at fishing stores and in a situation like this it can absolutely save your tank. If you don't have a battery bubbler then you can get a battery backup. I got this one that's 330 watts on Amazon for like 200 bucks, 250 bucks or something like that. Uh, but that will power my bubbler for days. Uh, and then there's always different ways to recharge it. I have solar panels that will plug into it as well. Uh, not everyone's gonna be proactive like that, uh, but you can, if you're using a smaller air pump, get a battery to get it to go for a long time. So definitely have either a battery backup or a battery power bubbler. You put it to a sponge filter. Ideally, you have a sponge filter already cycled. This will be the only means of filtration for your tank during a power outage, but more importantly, it's also gonna keep movement at the surface of the water, agitate the surface of the water, and keep oxygen in the tank for your fish to breathe. So you're accomplishing two things with one task. You're aer aerating the tank, and you're also filtering it and keeping the uh, ammonia levels and nitrite levels and nitrate levels a little bit more at bay. It might not be your canister filter, but at least it's doing something. Number five, thermal blanket. It will keep in a lot of heat, but it will also keep all excess light out of the tank, which if you're overcrowding in the tanks at the time, will keep the fish from fighting. It will keep them more calm and slow their metabolism. Now, if more than a day goes by and your filter turns back on because the power comes on, a lot of your bio filter is gonna be dead and it's gonna be dumping a lot of ammonia into the tank as soon as the, the filter turns on. So what I'd suggest is unplugging your bio filter and dealing with that once the power comes back. The other thing you may wanna look into doing is pulling out the bio media in your filter and putting it in the tank. You can actually put it underneath a bubble stone, which would keep oxygen going in there, preserving your bio filters. So that when you put it back into the filter, after the power comes back on, you don't have to recycle the tank. Realistically, at this point, you're probably more than a day into the power outage, but all those things, one steps one through six, could probably get you through a full day without the temperature in the tank getting too low. Now, it may depend on what the temperature is where you are, and if it's the winter time and the temperature inside the house is beginning to get really cold, that's really going to start dragging on that ambient temperature, and it's time to be thinking more options as far as heating the tank will still be good on filtration for a while, and we should be good on aeration and oxygen, but now is when we really need to be focused more on keeping the tank warm. Uh, Joey, 
The King of DIY has an awesome video on all the different methods to keep your tank warm with the least amount of energy possible. Some of them may even be chemical methods of taking salt and water in a water bottle, shaking it, getting it to warm up and putting that in the tank. That's an option. There's also an option with the potato. There's also an option of putting a pot over a hot fire, getting it to boiling and then floating it over the top of the tank. There's multiple options to, to continue heating the tank and keeping it warm. From there, you're gonna need to do more in-depth research to what option will work best for you. Go watch Joey's video, The King of DIY. That'll explain to you how to best do number seven. Number eight might be the most important, plan. You, if you don't know exactly how long the power is gonna be out, be prepared to do the next step. If you think it's gonna be a short-term power outage, be planning for a longer-term power outage. If it's gonna be a really long-term power outage, be planning for a really long-term power out outage. God, I hope if you're watching this, it either just went out or it's about to go out, which means you should start planning for whatever could happen. So if you guys got value out of this, please like and subscribe down below. If you want some information on my aquaponic system, by the way, I never need to do water changes on this system ever <laughs> ever and uh it also grows my food so that's kind of cool but if you want more information on that is in my channel so go check it out like and subscribe down below thanks guys have a great day You should go subscribe, this is really cool.